All right, what's good, y'all? It's your girl, your favorite pretty girl, Carmen Mello, the 901 Hummingbird. You can find me on pretty much any and everything at Carmen Mello, or sometimes it's Flip Mello Carmen, but for the most part, you can find me at Carmen Mello on any and all platforms. <laughs> Hey, welcome back to Cut the Malarkey Radio, man. Right here on Bumper 96.3 is your boy Black Haven Mon. And in the building right now, we got Carmen Mello. Man, give a shout out to the girl. What's up, girl? Memphis on. Hey, period. Black Haven's on. You know what I'm saying? Black Haven's on. Hey. You know the best come from the Haven, you know? Oh, Lord Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> you hear me? You hear me? I need to uh, hear me. Uh, Big V A Z. He off the chain now. It's too bad. <laughs> Jesus help us today. <laughs> oh man. Yeah. So we really wanted to talk to you about some of the some of the stuff you've been doing. Like you've been putting on shows. You got new music coming out. So you really been doing it big for the city. So um, and it's really it's really a blessing to have you on the show. Uh, Thank you. I know for sure you got Pretty Girl Stunt coming out. Yes. Right. So we wanted to talk about that record and like what inspired you to make Pretty Girl Stunt? Okay. So what inspired me to make Pretty Girl Stunt? Okay. So not to, you know, to my own harm, but I do know that I am a pretty girl, pretty woman, pretty lady. So um, initially it was just like on some playful, like I'm a pretty girl. I get what I want. You know, the pretty privilege type of thing. Mm -hmm. But then, um, as people, women in particular, have been like gravitating to it, it more so um, turned into like an anthem in a sense for just pretty girls, period. Not even just women. Of course, my verses is grown, but the hook is what really um, sells for me personally. The, I'm a pretty girl. I get what I want. I'm a pretty girl. Somebody will if you want. So I was just thinking more so like even with little girls, like, you know, most, most girls are daddy's girls. So if you ain't going to mm -hmm. get and if my daddy don't get it, my uncle gonna get it, my granddaddy, somebody gonna get it because I'm a pretty girl and I'm spoiled and I give what I want. So it's that type of thing. Got you. Okay, so with the record, so you you came up with the hook before you came up with all your, with all your verses and stuff oh. like that. Okay. Yep. Okay, that's what's up. So, oh, yeah, like, right. so like I said, it come out on the 13th. Where can people mm -hmm. like find this record when it drops? It'll be everywhere. All platforms, everything, Shazam, <laughs> mm -hmm. by the <laughs> Uh, YouTube, TikTok, Instagram, you name it. It's going to be on there. For sure. For sure. Okay. So so me listening to your music, got deep dived on you, and I'm loving it. I love how unique you are. I want to know, how did you become so unique and different in the land where, you know, Memphis, most of the generic, everybody sound the same. How did you find your own sound? Um. Well, I have a, like most people, I'm, I have a church background, so... Um, initially, that's why I'm the hummingbird because I, I, I'm a singer before I'm anything. I like mm -hmm. to tell people, singer that can rap. So I don't consider myself a rapper. I'm really, if anything, I'm just an artist because I feel like I can create anything. I'm a songwriter. Anything you heard me spit, sing, I wrote it. So, um, yeah. you know, I honestly, I've been writing songs long enough in my coloring books. Like, I, I literally remember being right there over by Fairly at my grandmama's house in the backyard on my coloring books writing songs at like four or five years old. And I just I just stick to what I like. You know, I, I've, I've mm -hmm. always been um, a musician in the sense of I don't necessarily have a favorite genre. I listen to anything. I can listen, I can sit and listen to jazz. I can sit and listen to country. I can sit and listen to rock and roll. I can listen to alternative. I, I, I don't really have a genre per se that I, I can listen to. So I, I can, I'm a chameleon in a sense. So mm -hmm. that's how I to, you know, try to, and it, it's it that within itself, just me wanting to stand out. I, I try to look for the beats or the tracks or even the words, like, hmm, what's a song nobody's ever talked about? What type of topics hasn't anyone ever talked about in a song? So that's how I try to, um, that's right. That, that, that's that, that's that BAZ stuff, that's that black hair <laughs> stuff, you know what I'm saying? You hear it, hey, you hear bro, me. Hey, bro. Hey, not, be, not all of hey, it, bro. not all of it. <laughs> 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 Because some people from the Haven, some people from the Haven can't stay on topic. <laughs> I, know, I know one in particular. Just one. 
Uh, see, haters. See, haters. Well, forever. Just, just forever. One. forever. It's not everybody. But <laughs> just, I, know, I know two people from the Haven that can write a song, but one person. <laughs> <laughs> what you got? Oh, um, so switching, switching subjects on from music. When you at home, say so you go back, you go back to the city. What's that one spot that you always eat at? The one spot I always eat at when I come back to the city. This mm-hmm. queen, easy. Hey. hey! <laughs> oh, wait, 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 wait. Which one I'm just like hating because I can't eat. Write the check. Uh, which one though? Uh, I'm going to say the one on Chevy Drive out there in the Haven. Got to. You hear me? Right across the street from, this, from, the, from the high school. You know it. Yeah. Yeah. No, That's one on third. One the high school? On Chevy Drive. Not the third one on third. The one, what, this is uh, a... St. Paul School, I think. Yeah, the St. Paul John. Yeah. I heard oh, yeah. the white people's school. Man, I know what I know. You know the you know <laughs> one on third is better, though. Bishop Burns is not school. She said not but, the one on third, bro. No. But the one on third is the best one, though. Everybody see, know that. See? Cause he, don't, he don't be in the haven, Carmen. He don't be in the I haven. Know. He don't know. I know what the one they, <laughs> in the haven. I know that one. I ate, I ate at all of them. But the one on third is the best one. What part of Memphis you from? I ain't from Memphis. I uh, see that's your problem. That's what, uh, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> you mean to no. tell me that I just gave you a cut? No, I'm on your, right there. I can't say that on the radio. Problem. <laughs> <laughs> problem. No man. All right. So what I want to do, Memphis? Go bro, ahead. I would check all three of y'all. <laughs> all right. Well, so all I y'all was. Um, so obviously you from the Haven, like, you know what I mean? You grew up and you was raised in the Haven, but like you spent some time in Atlanta. So I wanted to ask, like, how did that help mold you as a creative, like as an artist? Living I'm glad you, because I can definitely say Atlanta has, um, definitely shaped my artistry because, um, my mom's been living pretty much my whole life. So I, I got to visit back and forth. So back in like, you know, the lean with it, rock with it days. I, I got to see the evolution of that. Even coming here in the, in the last, you know, 10 years or so, I got to watch the evolution of the Migos and QC and Thug and all of those trouble, all those people that were, you know, they were underground when I first got out of here. So it's just like um, seeing how they, you know, work together to push everybody and link together, even if they even had like beefs or whatever, they just still focus on the money and the music. It's not like with Memphis where... You know, it's all about being in competition and killing each other at the competition. They, they more so like stunting. So that's where it goes back to the pretty girl stunt thing. Like, I want, I'm pushing out, hey, I'm going to kill you. I'm going to stunt on you. I ain't got to kill you physically. I'm going to kill you mentally, spiritually with how I put on for myself. Mm-hmm. So Atlanta is definitely a big, big part of, of, of um, how my music was shaped. I even went to school out here my senior year. So um, I was in an arts program at my school then. So um, shout out to my school out here, Papa J. He definitely was like on some lean on me type of um <laughs> mentor. I, I ain't gonna lie, coming coming from Memphis, when you leave out those high schools and go to other high schools, that's how I feel. You be like, you mm-hmm. think that that's how it is till you go other places. They be like, nah, bro, we don't need, we ain't even on that. We hold hands I, and sing it to my yacht. To go from the t- that you gotta walk through every day to not, you like. Oh, so mm-hmm. it's the real wrong with my city because why we got metal detectors? Y'all ain't got no metal detectors. Why y'all ain't got metal detectors? For real. <laughs> Real talk, real talk. It's like a shock, it is. <laughs> mm-hmm. So, with you saying that, you know, I know you from the city, you from the Haven. You spent some time in Atlanta. Who really influenced you, and who who did you get in, inspiration from to start doing this? So I'm gonna say, so I'm gonna say, musically, initially, it was Aaliyah. Aaliyah is a big, big part of, um, you know, my look. Uh, I grew up. The pretty Tom girl, you know what I'm saying? Tom boy, if you want to say. Um, the girl who liked to wrestle and play basketball with my brother, but I still want to keep my hair and my nails done. So I definitely was really, really big on Aaliyah. You know how um, she, how big of her reputation and um, to stand out. It goes back to the question y'all just asked. Um, she was really big on standing out and, you know, tuning her own horn and not being like everyone else. So she definitely influenced a lot of 
my sound, my style, and my mentality with the music. Um, but also Missy Elliott, which you know is still mm. is right along with it. Missy is a big part of being different too, because we all know how Missy come and Missy gonna be very creative, oh, yeah. Missy, oh, yeah. very out of the box, very you know even my like the wild colors, the, you know different things. So you know, For sure. I saw yeah Lydia and Missy Elliott, their whole little dream team was a big big influence. Oh, that, that's some good inspiration right there. Yeah, yeah. You know, rap thing as well. And you're right. So Missy just a you know triple threat. And all, well, more than a triple threat. She just a threat in every arena that she you know she touched. So that's that's what I strive to do and strive to be. This one was more like a like an initial thought. Like so, your first thought that comes to mind when I bring these two like recent accomplishments for you up. You just put on the second Connect Work con uh, concert. Um, then you had a performance in Atlanta, like right after that. So the first thought that comes to your mind when you think of those two big things for you? Um, on my grind, I'm, I'm, I'm grinding. You know, it's 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 kind of major to throw a whole concert and then 24 hours later you're traveling across, you know, across states to go to a whole nother show. So it takes a lot of um, stamina, a lot of energy. A lot of determination, a lot of perseverance to do something like that. Because some people be like, nah, I'm not, I can't do all that. That's too much. Mm -hmm. So, the that's the people that ain't hungry enough. Facts, facts. So, so piggybacking off his question, being an artist, you know, we have a lot of sacrifices. Right. What's one? Of the, what's one of the biggest sacrifices that you've had to do that you really opens your eyes to? Yeah, this is something that has to happen. Wow. I don't know what the fuck I'm trying to get out. Hold on. I, 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 I get in out. Um, time away from my kids. That's the biggest. That's the biggest thing. Like you know, it's it, it's it's that balance where even just with regular people, work, family, life balance. You mm -hmm. know, how to do this so that I can provide for mine. But at the same time, it's like I'm missing out on certain things. I'm you know I'm not spending as much time as I would like to. Um, and I can't yeah. be. There. It might be some things I'm gonna miss because of it. So I say the biggest sacrifice is that. But at the same time, to kind of piggyback off that, um, if you um, looked on my page as well, you can see I, I did a um, I did um, keeping in Memphis, uh, which is a big uh, showcase that's here. And uh, my son was on stage with me performing. So at the same time, although um, as we know, music is very demanding, I got time away from him. Yeah influence him because he likes it. he wants to do it so it's kind of a it's a sacrifice but it's a win in a sense because it's giving him something to not only be proud of me for but also you know something that he might want to indulge in when he's older or even while he's young yeah that's i i can really relate to that because i see my sons they they see me do this and they oh daddy we heard you on the radio or daddy we see you in there recording and daddy can i record can i use your mic and you, <laughs> <No>. you, <laughs> we want to give them a good example and show them that yeah you can do whatever you want to do whatever you put yep. your mind to as long as you put the time in yeah you can do that yeah that, that's awesome yeah absolutely all right all right all right all right black haven everything <laughs> <laughs> christ <laughs> now we got then we got put some can we put some Mississippi in, there, in here somewhere? Jesse, that, oh, there it came out now. That it makes sense now. It makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> why hold on, wait, wait, wait. I got a question for you, Poppy Loki on the No, on. I got a why, question. Why does every guest we have say the because, same thing about Mississippi? Because, because everybody be hating. Do this, bro. <laughs> everybody be hating. Because you know, PhD, we right there with Mississippi. So you already know they be on some. They just they want to be Memphis. They want to be Memphis. They know they do, but it's okay. They, they want to be part of Memphis. They want to be in Memphis so bad. First of all, <laughs> first of all, where I'm, where I'm from, where I'm from is an hour from Memphis. It's Thank y'all. Like 30, 40 minutes, bro. Miss Carmen Mello, describe one of the most nerve wracking performances that you've had so far and how did you overcome it? Nerve wracking, sheesh. Uh, depends on what you mean by nerve wracking because me personally, I feel like most, most any and every show, you still gonna have those butterflies before you go on just because you know it just comes with the anticipation and, and anxiousness you feel to get on this stage. So, what do you mean exactly by nerve wracking? One of them shows where you know you gotta put on. For people okay. to know who Carmen Mello is. Mm. Mm, okay. Like, I got to burn this stage down today. Do platforms count? Mm -hmm. Platforms. Or do you like to be the real stage? 
all of it. I bet. So I'm gonna say my most my most nerve wrecking was the fam famous animal joint that I did. Oh, you famous killed that joint. And you killed that joint. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> so. <laughs> that was why I, I felt like being at, at such a huge platform right now and y'all be hearing the people that's on there. I mean, we you know, some of them is kind of iffy, but then mm. um it's some real spillers on there. So, you know, it's like you don't want to go down there and you see the comments, ah, oh, they trash, ah, oh, you know, ah, oh, so it's like yep. that was the most nerve wracking because it's like I gotta come on here, I gotta deliver, I gotta be on point, I gotta look good, sound good, my rhymes gotta be hard, like I gotta kill this. So and then you know you live with it, so it ain't like you know what I'm saying that you got a recording that you already did and then you playing now nah, you really in his studio and you on their mic. Da, 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 da. Uh, so shout out to famous. That man. was probably my most nerve wracking because like I gotta. You know they can make a break. <laughs> hey, hey, you did your thing. You did your I thing. I did see Appreciate one of your your performances though. You had three background dancers, and I was sitting there. I was like, "All right, okay, then." That's what <laughs> I was thinking too. Like when he was asking this question, I was like, "Oh no!" Because when I saw your performances, um, like the videos that you have out. Like you give a lot of energy on the stage, you know what I'm saying? So yeah. you, deliver, you have the choreography, you have the lyrics, you have the music and everything going. So like you had a whole package going. So I was thinking like, um, when you prepare for something like that, how do you really engage with the crowd to kind of get them going to be a part of your performance? Cause I noticed that's like a big part of kind of what you do too. Mm -hmm. Um. So basically what I do, uh, so that's, that was what made it, okay. So, you know, they, they like the saying where they say artists have to do their 10,000 hours. Mm -hmm. Well, I know that for me, I've done my 10,000 hours because, like I said, I started in church. So being a singer in church, you know, their pressure, there is some yeah. serious because you got to sing, you know, so they can, mm -hmm. you know. So, like, that was my very first stage to, and then we know, no offense to the Christian community, but they are very judgmental. So it's just like, you got to be on point in that stage. So um, I'm going to say... Uh, starting there, learning how to engage with the crowd. It was for me. Um, how I came up with it was like, I'm a pretty girl. This is my song. This is what I'm. 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 I'm stamping right now. So one thing that I think of is like, what's a what's a easy question to gauge the crowd, but also will gauge the crowd. So me being pretty girl, boom. The easy thing I can do is say, hey, who I'll rock with a pretty girl. And if you love you a pretty girl, let me hear you holler, pretty girl. They gonna eat this up every time because. The dudes gonna say they love a pretty girl. The mm. girls gonna say they love a pretty girl. Or you know, if you a pretty girl, I tell me you say pretty girl. Yeah. And then I mean, even with my pop my shit song, it's like if you pop your shit, let me go pop 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 pop. Who don't pop 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 pop? Yeah. Right. Yeah. So you know, it was just a, it, it was just an easy thing to you know kind of do the icebreaker because as an artist, you know they already don't. Um, in the beginning stages before you blow, they don't know your music. So it's like mm -hmm. a lot of times you can just stand in the crowd full of other artists who ready to get on stage mm -hmm. and pop their stuff. Mm -hmm. Or you in front of an uh, audience that really want to hear what you got going, but you got to catch their attention. So it's just a, a matter of, you know, really putting thoughts together in your show. Like, I'm not one of those artists that just go up there and boom, I'm just going to be up there and I'm, I'm just going to do my thing. No, I really, I'm at home, I'm planning, I'm practicing, I'm really putting time, effort, and a creative, you know, effort behind my stage set. Okay, yeah, that's what's up. Yeah, you it really shows. You. Like I said, you give yeah, a lot of energy and everything. Like everything looks like it's in place. Like the choreography and everything is on point. So yeah, it really shows. So you practice at home during your performances at home. I rock with it. I won't say as much as I I, I could, but I definitely do. Like I, I take my time to. Think about, you know, what songs I'm going to perform, what story I'm trying to tell, um, what type of energy I want to, you know, present, you know, to my audience. So, yep, I definitely take my time out because, I mean, everybody, um, there's so many artists now, you know, everybody named Mama want to rap, sing, dance, whatever. And like y'all said, asked me earlier about the standing out. That's all I think about in my head is what can I, what can Hummingbird, what can Carmen Mello do to to stand out and really show people who is Carmen Mello, who is the Hummingbird? Mm -hmm. I want to know right now, producer or artist, who would you like to work with in the future? Producer or artist? Yeah. Right now, I ain't gonna lie. I want to work with Take Keith because Take Keith got hey! going crazy, mm -hmm. yes, and he's from the city, so you hear me? I definitely want to work with Take Keith for sure. 
uh, producer wise, yeah. artist wise, uh, I'm gonna say right now, honestly, I want to work with Juicy Fruit, Juicy Fruit, K Carby, them like two of my oh, yeah. top people. Carby, yep, hey, and, and me, uh, I, I miss with K Carby. <laughs> 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 Papa Luciano. Hey, Papa <laughs> hey, why you looking like that, man? She said, Poppy, let's go. Hey, man, stop, stop trying to make me laugh, bro. I'm trying to. <laughs> I'm trying to smoke Trying to be professional. Oh, my God. Look at him. Don't make me laugh. <laughs> <laughs> it's got to be a clip. Okay. Oh, oh, man. Oh. <laughs> Uh, I, I, hey, I like the fact so, that you said you perf I I love the fact that you said I perform at home. Yeah, I don't understand how much you have fun at home performing your song. Yeah, true yes. stuff. <laughs> but then when you get to take it onto a stage, because like I perform and I used to just perform at home with a little the paper towel roll, like it was a microphone. So mm. one, once oh. I got the chance, the little cardboard part. Wow. So once I got the chance to hold an actual mic, bro, it really resonated. Whenever I hit the stage, like with uh, bands and different stuff like that, like she was saying, like you always had like that nervousness before you go on, but you know, preparation, bro, you prepare for it, so. See, I, I didn't prepare. So when I got on stage and the people didn't like me, I cussed them out and I'm now, yeah. I'm, I'm, I, I, I cussed yeah. them out. I ain't gonna lie, that's their black cave and stuff for sure. Yeah, I, I cussed them out, and uh, like, and they was looking at me like, oh, and I was like, you know what? Oh, y'all, I don't give up none of this shit. <laughs> yeah, cut the mic on, bitch. You know, I was, I was <laughs> Carmelo, when I tell you, this man literally went before me at a talent show in high school and changed the whole dynamic after that. <laughs> they was wrong, bro. Bro, them folks wasn't wrong. The mic was already on, bro. You just went out there and started cussing them white folks out for no you reason. Rap. <laughs> you I didn't ruin rap, rap for them. <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> it is what it is. Thank you. It, it, it is what it is. Forget them people. <laughs> <laughs> that was, what, 14 years ago. Forget them. Care about none high school. <laughs> apologize. Not really, Horn, though. Horn Lake, I apologize for messing up rap for everybody who want to be a rapper out there in Horn Lake, Mississippi. <laughs> How about that? That's a formal apology for your ass. Can't rap. You can't say that on the radio. Oh, okay. I'm sorry, Horn Lake, Mississippi. They go apology for you. Oh, <laughs> them folks can't rap. You got, uh, what they gonna uh, rap about? Uh, going to South Haven? Need to really go hit it with that question. Oh yeah, for sure. Okay. Oh, are you so hard on Horn Lake? <laughs> so if you if you going like on a like a relaxing vacation, like a getaway. Everybody always say, man, you got like 10 items. You got five items. Nah, like you got four things that you got to have with you. What are those four things? On a vacation? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. It can be anything. Anything, but it's only four. Only four. All right. Of course, I got to have, me personally, I need I, I need to have my money on me, whether it's cash or card. Um, My phone. Mm -hmm. Hey. So, Mm -hmm. Um, depending on where I'm traveling, my weapon. Hey. You know, somebody can't take your weapon. Mm -hmm. Um, and lastly, <laughs> uh, let me think. My kids. See, Even I would have left, left them. I would have left mine. <laughs> so you. I, I'm just being them. honest. All four of them left. <laughs> left. <laughs> I'll pull up. Yeah. Where, where we going? You know, like I don't care where we going. We could be going to Kroger. <laughs> left. Cap. <laughs> See, <them> cap. <laughs> Bro, you cap. See, no I'm cap a, in front of lady. I don't mind traveling alone, but it's like if I'm a travel, I might as well travel with my, my, my you know, I got boys, so boys. Oh boy, hey, boys. I got all boys. Four of them. Oh yeah, that's okay. Why I, that's why I said left. <laughs> Yeah. Cap. <laughs> mm -hmm. At the house. <laughs> you hear me? Cap. So I'ma uh I'ma steal your question, uh D Tere. That okay? Do your thing, bro. You always hey, so, steal, man. so coming from the city, you know, they always say play me some pimping. If you had to put an album together with straight pimping, 
What would that album consist of? You say who would the album consist of? Yeah, if you had to put an album together, straight pimping, that P. That P. Everybody no, J P or, or Project Pat for sure. Mm. We're gonna talk about P. Cause they talking about the real P. See the new folks, they ain't talking about the real P. You know. Yeah, mate, say it again. Say it again, Melo. Say it again. <laughs> biology, you gotta go back and listen to that biology, you know, space pimping. That alone. That alone. And honestly, I'm not gonna lie. Despite people play with him and sleep on him, Wale. Wale can talk because he's a poet. So he knows he got a um one of his underground songs called um The Manipulation Soup. Where he started off spitting poetry and basically how he did the song was he was illustrating how men spit their game to the women to get them, you know, get them weak for him and then boom, it turns to what he's talking that, that shit. Like how y'all be, yeah, I ain't studying thank, old thank stuff. You for, like, thank you for thank you for telling us that he told all the trade secrets. That's basically <laughs> what he did. That's basically what he did. He Let did me it tell poetically him. though, because he he did it poetically. The average female ain't gonna get it because he was he was saying some things. Mm -hmm. Like he got me. <laughs> 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 hey, when when a man get you to put your hand on your head like that, yeah, <laughs> yeah, he, he he did his thing. He did his thing. Yeah, stole my question, bro. So, um, the last question is, what can people expect from Carmen Mello coming up, like album wise, new music, uh, any more uh, show dates? Time to say what I want to release. So oh, I'm got, cooking it in my got stuff recorded just like in the cooking. <laughs> like okay. I can say I got I got two albums locked and loaded in the in the vault. I got like two albums and like three singles just ready. Just ready off top. Cool. That's what's up. Mm -hmm. She got the clip full. Yeah, that's that's really because cool. yeah, there's a lot of people last was even got, got one done. videos. I actually got three videos I'm dropping real soon. It's gonna be a back to back to back to back thing. I can give y'all exclusive, so I have not announced it, but since I'm gonna announce it here, because I, I rock with y'all, I enjoyed this this interview, and I enjoyed the, and I appreciate the invite. Um, I have another single that I have been pushing before, Pretty Girl, called Murder Scene. So Pretty Girl and Murder Scene will be dropping, and I'm gonna do some Jacqueline Hyde type stuff because Murder Scene and Pretty Girl are kind of the same, but it's two different, you know, things. So okay, I'm waiting on that. That's what's up. Yeah, for sure. And we thank you for coming on Cut The Malarkey Radio. We're here with Carmen Mello. It's been a great interview. We really enjoyed having you on. Carmen, tell the people where they can find you. All right. What's good, y'all? It's your girl, your favorite pretty girl, Carmen Mello, the 901 Hummingbird. You can find me on pretty much any and everything at Carmen Mello. Or sometimes it's Flip Mello Carmen. But for the most part, you can find me at Carmen Mello on any and all platforms. Hey, man, you like hot wings. Bring your big head out here to predict <laughs> <laughs> Hey, you ain't doing nothing. Head over to the social medias. TikTok, Facebook, Instagram. Man, go like it and share it, man. Help your boys out. Cut the malarkey TV, man. Cut the malarkey TV. Head over there, like, share, subscribe. Man, help your boys out.